That's a exactly. good day. That's just, a good day of work, right? So turning up at the office as exactly. well. Exactly. And yeah. I'm curious what's going to happen when it comes to EU versus NA as well, because that's where things are going to be even more interesting, at least in my eyes, of how teams are going to be able to adapt quick enough. But as we are going to be ki uh, kicking off this first best of five here today, obviously we'll be heading over to Fission here for some payload, and then we'll be switching over to the uh, King of the Hill points later on in the series. But it is a best of five, so we'll see what happens if we do get past the three map mark. Match starting but let's, let's talk about the payload, because we've actually covered nine, it one week here, uh, eight, Jersey. So if seven. you're... Oh, what Six, would you say is harder, attacking five, or defending, first four, of all? Well, originally, three, I believe two, it was incredibly attacker-favored, right? So it was almost never a, a defender at all, but very rarely did a defending team actually successfully defend the point. That said, having watched kind of payload starting to take shape and the meta starting to form, I, I'd like to say it's, it's much more even now. We're seeing a lot more kind of onus on teams that can defend well are doing a great job. And they, a lot of the time, they're actually stopping it at this very point which we're watching right here, which is the initial choke, right? Getting out of this is actually surprisingly hard because the you've got you're going into this big open space. There's a huge amount of land uh, or space that the uh, attacking teams can get get you in. So it's going to be it's, it, this is an interesting one to to fight. And we saw actually well, a couple of weeks ago when we were covering this, a lot of teams like to go with this aggressive play and just kind of slingshot each other straight into the defenders to try to pull off like a three on two or a four on two man advantage. But they actually been able to pick up the initial frags here, it seems like. I think Clefton was one of the first players to fall out of Jonas, who seems to just really be going off now. It's allowing the payload to get a really far here into this first checkpoint. And we do have the two defenders pushed up. I would actually love to see, like, now Smash the Crabs take advantage of this man's situation, finish them off before they even have a chance for the full team to come back through. And they're trying to go for that now, but the problem is it looks like Swingly might have put himself in a bad position. He needs to hit these shots here as he goes directly into the face of his opponent. I think Mighty Adam just... Stalled for time. Yeah, Mighty doing a great job in there. And an I think it was a 1v2 or 1v3 situation. Doing a fantastic job stalling out, which is actually something that usually you don't want to do. But I'd argue on payload actually has its like value because on these points, you really want to stall as much as you possibly can. It's slightly different to the capture the point in that every second you get here is significantly more valuable in terms of being able to delay them from pushing that point, even just a meter. Um, because obviously, if they don't have anyone on the point as well, something that happens in this uh, in this payload uh, game mode is that the payload does actually start falling back and it starts retreating at a reasonable pace as well. So you can push them back into those open chokes where it's so much more difficult for them to fight through it. And you see the defenders of Casual Echoes have been able to actually maintain this first point. But again, it's just the first checkpoint and they need to cross this line for Spax and Crabs to add some extra time to the clock here. Jock has already fallen though, but so has Brexit kind of lead his way himself out of this game here. Don't know if that affects you in Jersey, actually. Are you technically part of the UK? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it would, I guess it would affect you there. But we see those faster crowds have been able to finish off the rest of the players, and they should be able to get this first checkpoint with relative ease. See a nice little wave coming in as Clefton just realizes, yep, well, I just need to kind of get myself killed here to get the respawn to regroup with the team. Number four for Brexit will be there to potentially do something, but instead just going to back off and get caught a little bit too far out. Yeah, I believe something else that actually changed as part of the payload map mobilized. update that we had for Payload, which is why we kind of saw its reintroduction uh, and obviously the kind of balance changes that came with it, was actually the respawn timers, I believe, in the respawn uh, rooms. And that we it, it's now much easier for defenders to get back into the fight. Uh, and I think that's something that we see a lot of juggling in the capture the point mode because whoever owns the point, uh, the well, kind of they, they have higher respawn timers, so it's all about juggling that. Whereas in this, you don't have so much of that, but it's the distance from the respawn room to where the point is being contested is far more important. That said, we are seeing Spastic Crabs pushing this into this big choke here, which is usually where teams like to hold this. It looks like Casual Echoes are doing a great job of holding this. Question is, how much longer will they be able to do so? They are a man down now. You see, they're trying to play a couple of different off angles. They have a flank coming in from the uh, the northern position. This is the north side of the arena. Number 11, again, it's going to be Mighty Adam. He gets a flank onto one player, finishes him off, and I think allows them to potentially pull off a good defense. So the respawns are coming back in now. Brexit trying to get back here to join Iterum. As his teammates just trying to stay alive here, most importantly, and obviously try to get some damage done nonetheless. But the payload is still moving backwards. And it looks like the orange side of Spasta Crabs, and you go back to the drawing board and take some time here to figure out what to do. Yeah, so it looks like, they, again, they're going to get stuck trying to go through this choke. Oh, a huge amount of damage coming into Spastic Crabs there, and they're going to be losing one member, another member going down, so that was going to leave them with one person left out in the field. They're going to retreat now, trying to get some space. Casual Echo is doing a fantastic job of holding this choke, and as you can see, the payload is starting to make its way back now. Uh, they've got a member deep, so they're going to be seeing to tr maybe try and get a flank here. Question is, are Spastic Crabs going to notice that beforehand? Yeah, I don't know. Mighty Adam, not on his point of view at the moment, but you can see him pushed up. You hear a little bit of communication as well here between both the teams. 
And it looks like he has been spotted and been finished off. Now, this is the, a massive downplay or downside here for Casual Echoes because they're going to be playing with a man disadvantage up against Spastic Crabs. So we're taking the time to push. I would have assumed, like, hey, you have a man advantage. Why not just rush into them here? Maybe try to hit from the northern angle at the same time and just try to pull off, like, a pincer move. And they do finally make the push on to Clefton, who gets an elimination onto Drago in the meantime and stays alive most importantly here. And it seems like the defenders, yet again, of Casual Echoes, even being down a man, have been able to maintain control. And that payload's almost fallen all the way back to the, the starting point here of our second phase. Yeah, some interesting use of the shield there, actually, which I really like to see. Something we don't get to see a lot in uh, in certain combat kind of compositions. Uh, looking at the guns that they're using, both teams running, both teams running kind of a, an interesting mix. We're seeing Casual Echoes running two pulsars, which you can see in the kind of the top right and left hand corners. Those little icons next okay. to the players indicate no. kind of which guns they're using. That's like it. We're seeing a really aggressive push here coming out from Spastic Crabs. Two members going down from Casual Echoes. Can Spastic Crabs finish off the job though? Another member going down, and that looks like it will be a full team wipe. Question is, can they push this all the way through? They cannot afford to lose a single member here. And it looks like they'll do it. Yeah, just an overtime though. If they fall off the payload, then they could pull well, a C9 if you are a fan of uh, other games that involve payloads. C number 11 could be uh, join the fight yet against me. Mighty Adam Brecht trying to flank around. Gets on top of the payload to stop it from being actually taken to the last checkpoint. But it does cross that line. They get the extra time on the board. Now two minutes left to go. And the blue side here of Casual Echoes will not be able to defend here, but they are really, like you said before, draining a lot of the clock here away from the Spastic Crabs. Yeah, two minutes on the clock to get over this last point. Now, as you see, the payload will kind of go up to the left here. It will take a 90 degree turn, and then it goes up this ramp. Now, this ramp is another one of those choke points which are really hard to, to attack, essentially. So really all Casual Echoes do need to do here is hold the high ground on this kind of raised platform and prevent this push from coming up this ramp, because if they do, it's really easy to keep kind of a permanent state where they're always trying to attack this ramp over and over again, which is the ideal situation you want to be in as a defender because this is an awkward spot for them to fight in. See Mighty Adam again getting a lot of damage done direct on top of Pele. Actually spot a man trying to flank around. I think that's going to be Jonas. At least the uh, call has been made. The Pele's going to continue to push up now. Mighty Adam taking a lot of damage yet again. The force will going to come down to by some sort of time here. Drago just going to push directly past and gets the eliminations. And look at that. Spastic Crabs are coming out the better of both teams. They've been able to successfully get up this ramp as you mentioned before. They've been able to get enough eliminations, ideally, to get the payload pushing. However, they stopped payload their progress. Returning. They're still looking for these last two players on like Casual Echoes who are defending. Yeah, I mean, in that situation where you've got two members left on the enemy team and they've just, they've, a decent amount of time has passed since the other two kills, by getting those two extra kills there, you are basically securing yourself quite a long period of time where you're going to be in a 4v2 situation. So it's worth allowing the payload to drop off because as you see here, they're now able to punish that and push that onto the very end, uh, just a few meters left. It looks like Casual Echo's in the death throes right now. Are they going to be able to hold on? Almost. It looks like enough damage has come through, and that will be Spastic Crabs taking first game. So, they, well, they, they at least finished. They didn't take the game just yet. Yeah, the first, sorry. Casual first, Echo's need to attack now themselves. Yeah. But I, I didn't actually see, uh, I wasn't watching the time, how much time they had left. Uh, I think it was like 20 to 30 seconds. Okay, so very, that's some time remaining. Time. Yeah. So now it comes down to them. Can they successfully defend here against Casual Echoes? Yeah. If Casual Echoes do complete, obviously we have to play yet through another time. Um, but it's going to be tough, I, I feel like. I, how the game started off, I thought Spastic Crabs were going to lose this one. It seemed like yeah, Casual Echoes had their, their number, but just something clicked within the team. Yeah, I think it was that 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 second choke. Uh, Casual Echoes did a really great job of holding that, I think. Yep. That they were yeah. able to push them back over and over again. Uh, the other thing is as well, I think that they also did, which was great, and you usually really have to have quite a lot of confidence as a team to be able to do this, was actually send someone to flank if you're defending. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the time when the attacking team is getting ready to bash up against that wall of that choke point, by having someone flank, you can really pull them out of guard because Defense if they're focused squad, all on positions. the front, trying to get those picks and trying right. to get damage in, that's the perfect time where, as a defender, you can have a man go around the back and pick up one or two kills, which will completely destroy and tear apart any kind of uh, offense. Yeah, and I was actually surprised to not see a little bit more of it. I think it was, uh, if I'm mistaken, Mighty Adam uh, taking the brunt of those flanks. But the thing is, it didn't really work out too well for him. I remember one time it did. I think that was it in towards the second phase. Yeah, the second phase, if I'm not mistaken. But all in all, I, I, actually, let me ask you this question. Do you feel like the meta has really been flushed out well? In Echo Combat, Match you still feel like there's a lot in. to learn, a lot of different ways yeah. you can still play that teams Nine, haven't really figured out. Eight, I think that there seven, is a lot of interesting six, differences between five, Payload four, and Capture the Point. Three, I feel like Capture the Point two, has actually, especially one, if you look at maps like Dyson, uh, they, that, that map specifically has actually had, I think, a, a quite a great meta that's been built around that in terms of pressuring the point, pulling off the point, allowing the other team to capture, rotations, different oh, wow. Sorry to cut you off, but no how deep 
collected yeah. when he just got sent directly towards the back lines. The payload's not moved at the moment, but they get the first elimination. A little bit of a phase shift coming in as well to help him escape, which is actually a, one of the abilities I want to talk to you about because we haven't seen too much of it over the course of these last few weeks. Yeah, I always love seeing a little bit of phase shift coming back into it. But yeah, as I was saying, For I think flankers is perfect, right? Yeah, I know absolutely. I think it's it's as much as its ability to draw pressure and actually like, immediately dissipate that. So if you can draw pressure from the other team, the focus allows your teammates to get in and do work. Uh, that said, we are seeing Casaleco's mopping up the remaining members here. We've got a 1v1 going on, uh, a crab fight down low. Oh, looks like it will be... Oh, again, this is just casual. Spastic Crab's trying to delay as much as possible. Ends up getting a trade there in a 2v1 situation. So great work there from Swingly. But the question is, can his teammates do anything to halt the rest of this tide? And it looks like that won't, though, there won't be enough. No, they got a 2 on 2 now, at least, on toward the payload. The defenders do for Spastic Crabs. And it looks like they actually were able to pick up the eliminations they need to halt the progress. The last players at Casual Echoes. See Clepton, who was a little bit a little bit pushed up, decides to just back off, wait for some teammates to respawn back in. Mighty Adam trying to get some progress here, but taking some damage for the troubles. Actually, was being eliminated here as well. Even a phase shift coming in as he's going to charge straight into Jonas, but Jonas should have this. Yeah, the question is, can he get enough space? Because the phase shift now lasts significantly longer. So, ooh, nice little shot there from the Comet, but not enough damage. He is going to get the second shot, though, which will take him out, meaning a lot of that wasted time there with the phase shift, which is really the downside of it, right? You, as you saw there, that was a huge amount of time that was invested and isn't necessarily resulted in anything. Now, if you're defending, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but in the offense, it, it makes a big deal. You need to have all of your members out there to be able to get these big fights, as we're seeing right now. Casual Echo's going deep. Mighty after going very, very deep. That's the second time he just goes like straight ham into the back lines. And the second time in a row, it just does not work out for him. I was questioning the last time he used phase shift to get so aggressive when his teammates weren't there and ready to push, but... Uh, he's just switched out. That's... <laughs> yeah, there's, got, there's got to be some like miscommunication, I feel yeah. like, on the side of Casual Echo's because they're kind of going in disjointed. He, he's also running uh, Pulsar, which I also find really strange because if you're running phase shift, you generally want to run a relatively close combat weapon. You're either running super close range, which is the Nova shotgun, or you're running super long range and that you're kind of expecting to be pressured if you're sniping from a distance and then the strength bits I think we were, we were yeah. casting like two weeks ago and there was a specific no I think it was boop uh, it could have been boop yeah it had to have been boop does yeah favor the comet as well so yeah um, you do see that as well, uh, which is kind of like the players basically playing long range, wait, baiting the basically the enemies to get on them, like, come and get me. Yep. I'm over here with a sniper, I'm defenseless in close range, and as soon as they come Nine. to you, all of your team Eight. turn and kill them, Eight. and then you just run out with a phase shift. Yep. And that's that's what we were actually wondering if we'd see a bit more of. Now, three seconds left to go here in this round. Casual Echoes need to touch the payload, and the guy they sent forward to do that, I think it was Mighty Adam, but he got blown before he even had a chance to touch it. And that's going to be it. Spastic Crab's going to pick up the first map here in this best of five and send us over onto some King of the Hill in a few moments here. Really well done. I, I yeah. didn't expect Spastic Crabs to have such a good defense there after they yeah. struggled on offense, but... I feel like Casual Echo struggled quite a lot there to try and get yeah. their attack in. And I felt like, as, as you said, I think in the game, that they, it was kind of piecemeal a little bit, right? They were sending one person in, I think it was, as you said, like uh, I think it was Mighty Atom that was going in head, head and shoulders above everyone else and then trying to, uh, the rest of the team trying to catch up to that. But unfortunately, I think that kind of played into, uh, played into the hands of uh, uh, Spastic. And um, they were just able to kind of mop that up every single time. Mm. Yeah, and I feel like their defense, the defense out of them was a lot better out of Casual Echoes than, than the attack. It, I mean, you would assume attacking, it takes more communication synergy to yeah. be able to like communicate what you need to do and to know like where you need to go and who you need to focus down. Defense is a little bit easier. It's a little bit more forgiving, yeah. I want to say, because yeah. you have the ability to like watch them come to you and hit shots as yeah. they're entering. Defense is reactive to some extent, yeah. right? So you've got to be a proactive on attack. So you'll have certain teams that will favor that and then certain teams that kind of favor that kind of will just see what you do and just yeah. kind of like have a selection of responses to it and hopefully one of those will work. And I think this is where you kind of see that big difference between the uh, Capture the Point and the kind of the payload maps in that you, in Capture the Point, it's kind of a constant flux between the two, whereas payload is very much, you need to be the team that comes out with something right now because you're yeah. attacking and you need exactly. to be the team that responds to it. Whereas we see something very different with uh, Capture Point, which is Prepare exactly what we're going to be getting into right now. And when I was talking to you before about like metas and, and how flushed out you think it is, um, looking over to, to control now, you know, one thing that we haven't seen a ton of, I don't know if it's just the teams we were spectating or what, but when there was like a clear man advantage on the defender side of having control of the point, they would be up like three to one or something like that. They wouldn't chase down that last player. 
they wouldn't just like chase them down to buy some extra time. Is there a reason it's, for that? And, to, I, and being worried about like, their respawns or what? I think it's like a risk reward thing. It's right. It's like yes, we can chase them down, and yes, we can potentially stagger their team. But at the risk of accidentally running into the other three members and then basically going and losing two members Point for nothing on high respawn timers. So Four, is this live? Four, I feel like it's three, a bit of a risk reward. So two, yeah. Oh, so we're seeing. No, okay. So we're just seeing. So actually, this is actually something that some teams do, and it's interesting that this has actually come up. Is that some teams will actually delay their spawn and wait and see what the other team are going to be where they're going to be positioning and how they want to play it. You can't, I don't believe you can tell the other team's loadouts from the initial spawn room, but something that you will see if you play in the spawn room, you actually see a map of the, uh, the the arena, and in there you can see the locations of the players. So it's something that you can use when you're in between rounds as well. If you're respawning, you can also see where see where everything is. Um, so it's, it's something that some teams can do. We haven't seen a great deal, but I think that, uh, it could have been there or it could have just been some kind of delay. But it, it could be, there is a, there's a legit, legitimate strategy behind that. Well, there's, and that's the strategy of you let the other team take the point initially and then yeah. you attack because then they have exactly, a respawn yeah. timer and any percent they accumulate, you'll basically be able to catch up onto Anyways, the problem is the downside, if you don't successfully attack, then they can get 50% built up against you, which we see Spastic Crabs now have here in this mini best of three in our best of five. You see Jonas trying to play a little bit of an off lane here, playing towards the high side, trying to provide some damage, and it looks like they've been able to do a decent amount of damage here, but Spastic Crabs still have control of the point. They're still putting up percent here, even though they have the longer respawn timers, but they're doing such a great job of just minimizing the amount of damage they're taking. Yeah, and again, you can see healing coming out from both teams. I think we've got uh, three heals on the side of Casual Echoes with two insta heal grenades, and we've got, again, two heals on the side of Spastic Crabs with, again, three insta heal grenades. So healing is kind of one of the, I would say, when you're talking about the meta, as, as we kind of been mentioning, healing is definitely one of the strong points in that at the moment. Because um, you've got both the ongoing healing, which are the kind of beams you see dropping out from player to player, as you can right see there. right there, um, which is, allows you to heal up your teammates Round slowly over time and that will be sorry spastic crabs taking victory. the first of that mini as you say mini best of three that we're going to be seeing here um spastic crabs successfully able to hold on to that for quite some time and i think as as we saw in the last map casual echo is kind of going for, through that process of one member at a time kind of mm. piecemeal approach which as we're aware isn't necessarily the most effective strategy when you're trying to go into these kind of 4v4 fights do you think teams look at um whether they're attacking or defending on the point of using the instant repair or using the repair matrix. Repair. Like the instant healing, I feel like would be more valuable when you're attacking, especially when trying to come into the tunnels um, behind the point, because you take yeah. so much AOE damage, you need to be able to instantly heal and healing over time is can be, can be bursted through. I, I think it's as much uh, that as it is tracking the enemies, um, what their door tacticals they're using, because you ideally want it, like the fight where you have all your tacticals up and they have just used all of theirs is the one you're going to win. Right. Uh, so it's a lot of actually well, kind of, yeah, well, yeah, fingers crossed. I mean, unless you go horribly wrong with it and all the insta-heal grenades go everywhere. Um, but the other thing is insta-heal grenades, if they're used correctly, they have the ability to actually heal, I think it's almost up to 300% of like your Quite team's health. If you consider that if you've got the multiplier, four, if you've got up to four three. people, you can heal from 25 to almost full. Um, it's a huge potential swing there. And you've got, obviously, when you've got four of those on the team, or as we see here from two or two or three of them, those are huge swing points. So using them correctly, as you're saying about the offense, like we're seeing some here, like you can just see how many heals are being popped right now. All of the healing from Casual Echoes, who are now in control of the point, has been used. However, we are seeing tacticals available for Spastic Crab. So this is now going to be a fight they're going to want to look at taking. Yeah, and they didn't really use too much in that engagement as well. Or maybe players just got burst down and will do too quickly to, to get them popped off. But we're going to see attack coming in. Number 46, Swingly. Actually going to be swinging around the other side of the arena here, trying to come in from the back. And Jonas is getting so much free damage off. No one's paying attention. This isn't the first time we saw him playing here up, to, or to, up toward technically the top of the actual point. Turns around as well, takes Iterium. Helps take down the damage of other players, and Spastic Crowd's not going to turn the point in their favor and should be able to tie things up evenly around 36% here before the next little fight comes through. And they didn't use much, actually, it looks like, to even take the point. Yeah, so they're in a really good spot now because this is the kind of position you would want to be in if you're expecting to now hold on to this for either the rest of the game or for a good 60-70%. Now, we're going to see a push through coming through tunnels. The question is, are Spastic going to be in a position to respond? This is going to be look like a potential early kill. Not enough damage coming through on that Nova. Heals popping out. Brexit going down, Joker also going down. We're in a one for one trade right now. Oh no, looks like again, another one for one trade. Dragon Boss going down in exchange for stuff done. It looks like Casual will be losing their last members. This is gonna be a 2v1. Can they mop it up? 
No, down into a one. No, no, sorry, that was a final kill. So that was going to be. That is Spastic Crabs now holding onto this point, as I said before, kind of using up their tacticals. But Boy, yeah, this is going to be trying to mop in. Oh, they rushed it again as a cleft and tried to rush directly to the point. Um, yeah, and then you just got immediately brexited out of the arena. I'm sorry, I should probably stop talking about that. <laughs> Anyways, um, but no, he just got completely eliminated before he even have a chance to really do any damage. I guess assuming they had more damage done than they did in the end of things. I was I'm actually surprised not seeing like a lot of meteors being used because from what we see in the past, when going through those tunnels, you just hit the AOE explosive damage, just decimates teams. Yeah. And I feel like maybe it's because Casual Echo's movement isn't as on par as what we see in the top teams, being able to dodge away from damage, using the terrain to actually just literally like grab around it like like monkey bars or something. Yeah, but we're seeing 95% on the board for Spastic Crabs. This is going to touch to be it. game. Okay. This, look, yeah, that is going to be game. And I believe that will be the first capture point map going to them. And yep. if I'm correct in thinking that that was also the payload map that went to them. But as this is a best of five, we're going to be going to jump now. on the gun a little bit. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. We're now going to be going to the next match. Yeah, I, I can tell who you think is the favorites in this one. I, I honestly... Gravity, obviously. Yeah, obviously, yeah. Um. No, I think it was funny about Gravity. Um, I remember talking to Affentair. Was it Affentair? I think it was someone in Katowice. Maybe it was the Eclipse Boys. How people made fun of like Flash Go Go saying like, oh, there's no way you can transition to Echo and do well. You're, you play Sprint oh, Vector and yeah. Unspoken. Yeah. And then he came into Echo and just started decimating everyone, just beating everyone. And everyone's like, oh, okay, yeah. actually, you're a pretty good player. Yeah, and I think as well, like, you've got Boop as well, he's playing on Blast. Uh, and I think Blast is basically Burst. actually Blast. Blast, sorry. Blast is actually made up of composed of strictly Echo Arena players, right? And the reason why they've come up and done so well is because they, their skill set transitioned across so well uh, from Echo Arena to Echo Combat. And I think something you'll notice with them is that. By far, I think out of almost any other Echo Combat team outside of potentially uh, Kangorillas, who are also, funny enough, an Echo Arena team, um, they have the best movement, like the fastest, the snappiest, the two-man stacks. They just they've got it all, and their navigation around the arena is something that is just that mobility gives them a huge amount of advantage. So yeah, yeah although we, we're seeing kind of a different approach from some teams, like we're seeing here from Casual and Spazdek, who are kind of more separated, kind of slow play. Um, it works in some regards, but yeah, it's it's something that you've got to juggle with your team strengths, and it just it's interesting to see how different teams are using like different loadouts differently to compensate for that as well. I think something we're seeing here is a lot of the teams actually both uh, Casual Lickers and Spastic Crabs using kind of uh, basically a very wide Ooh. range of guns. It's not really like comp co composition. It's more of a, I'm very Boy, familiar I'm and I'm very good at using this specific Boy. loadout. Boy. I'm going to use this because it's best for me. Okay. Yeah, and I think we're also seeing that maybe they definitely don't have backgrounds in Echo Arena because their movement doesn't seem to be as flawless. And you talk about, you know, the players who have transitioned from Arena over to combat. The thing is, you pair that movement and that speed and how f that finesse they have compared to having to play reactively when defending points, and you're not able to defend as well when they're flying at you a lot quicker than used to, or they're able to get in positions you're not prepared for. But we see now Spastic Crabs able to have the initial control of the point. Respawn's coming back in here for Casual Echoes. The two players pushed. I don't know why they pushed up by themselves here. The other two players have just left the tunnels to get back in to join their team. Now they're going to be fighting 3v4. Hopefully looking for some damage, because if they can get a, uh, a kill or two, they actually could come back in full force and take this away. Yeah, so looks like another good hole from Spastic Crabs. Again, tactical's starting to be thrown out from them just to kind of hold on to this. We're seeing, again, insta heal grenades, lots of healing coming out from both sides. We do actually see a phase shift on the side of Spastic Crabs. Jonas running phase shift, which is uh, great to see, and a shield coming out as well from Casual. Both of them being used relatively early in these fights. Spastic, again, this combustion very well known for the ability to hold on to it. So as a defender, if you can get this point, it's really hard to take as an attacker. So it's something that, oh, it looks like we're having, <laughs> I don't know if that was a kill me because I need to reset for my team, which I think it was because they have now 10% left to try and get back in on this. And this is going to be a tough one because they are going into this 2v4. Yeah, and they're going to be blunt before they even have a chance to touch the point. 99%. And there it is yet again here. That's not even Round the first time complete. we've seen Casual Echoes not contest Blue the point in time. We've had it happen on Payload, on Fission. We've had it happen uh, just before on Dyson twice. And now here another time as we move on to Combustion. If you notice, actually, Jonas was used that face shift pretty well, too, because he was playing aggressively off the point. He was away from the rest of his team. 
trying to look for some like early damage. He wasn't playing like off angles, you know, to try to hit them from behind or something, but he was playing a, a different position than the rest of his teammates. And then if he got in trouble, he would just phase shift and just regroup right back up. Yeah, I think I think that's a huge advantage of it. And Prepare although we kind of haven't seen point. it a great deal in some of the top teams, I just, I think that it does have a lot of potential. And as, as we kind of just discussed there uh, about kind of the ability to use it to draw pressure, <laughs> coming back to the point about movement and finesse, I think we just seeing one of the players from uh, Casual Echoes going face first into the wall, which is something that can happen in Echo if you're, if you're not uh, quite accurate enough with those throws. It's very easy to go very fast into a wall. That's it. We're seeing a really aggressive positioning coming out from Spastic Crabs. I think getting a little bit too comfortable after that first round, thinking that they could just float on the point free. And yeah. Casual Echo is punishing that because they were set up low in those tunnels. When you saw like a little bit of fun between them two, weaving at each other at the end of the last round. And then, uh, well, unfortunately, I think that was Iterium who just got blown up when trying to make peace. But we'll be unlocked here. It looks like it will go the way here of Casual Echoes in a second. But now, can they defend it successfully? As you mentioned before, Combustion will be a map that favors the defending team on the point. You can see them holding for a long time, especially a lot of these mini islands to use as cover. But they're not actually using anyone to push off the point. So again, prepare for flanks, to gather information more importantly, to see where they're coming from, to yeah, maybe get some early damage. That. And <laughs> right there, Jock, just getting a lot of free damage in. Yeah, that's the thing, and I mean, it, they are they are popping healing, so they will, they should, oh no. no one's looking they, at them. As soon as they say that, it's left and get, basically gets knocked out straight away. Swingley going low, oh. Interim getting taken out, lovely snipes coming in here. I think actually, that is two kills, I believe, back to back, no, two, no, one sniper kill, one Nova kill, actually. Sorry, coming out of, uh, kind of spastic crowds. So Trades now going in, Brexit going down. And this is looking like a good attack here from Spastic Crabs, who will now take the point. 50% on the board, though, for Casual Echoes. Capture. Well, we saw before, actually, that was really nice timing of that, too, because the longer response going to go to Casual Echoes, and Spastic Crabs going to be able to get back here in time, especially trying to use the movement to their advantage. Seeing Jock, though, in that last attack, he was like at another odd angle, and he was just hitting them for free. No one even turned to look in his direction to shoot him back. He was getting a lot of free damage off, as well as Jonas. As mentioned before, Jonas is going to be using the uh, phase shift as well. So if he does get aggressed on while trying to snipe away, then he should be fine. And Swingley looking to finish off the elimination, but not able to catch him out. But just coming behind, not even being spotted. Where's the calls? Where's any information being given to where they're coming from? Yeah, that was uh, that was a complete destruction there coming out from Casual. I think it was Interim actually going running around with the Nova there, just completely mopping up, not able to do anything. And then, oh, we're going to see Drigo trying to contest here. Now, the question is, he's not staying Oh, okay, so we, he's not saying on the point, which is what you kind of need to do if you want to stop the, the clock ticking up. Because if you contest it, you are very at the very least, you stop point it from ticking over. Uh, as we're seeing here, so he's finally gone to contest it, but it's going to be taken back again. Oh, this looks like it will be another kill, so this is going to be... No, okay, finally goes down. But after two members of Casual Echo also go down, so this should now be a great fight for Spastic Crabs. Yeah, they should be able to take this one and have a, a majority of their players left alive here too. A little bit of a stall out of Drago Boss, but it works out in the end. And more importantly, he got the elimination in for the longer respawn time for Casual Echo, so there's no chance to really contest. Again, number seven, Clefting can be pushed up here. All right, I mean, again, if you're like a, a team that knows how to, to use your movement, you would assume you would sit back with the rest of his teammates. Or maybe he's just trying to scout for some information. But that's good initial damage being done. Jonas might be overwhelmed, but again, he's got the phase shift, so he should be fine. She's going to push that to the brink there, as you see, down to a very low, late, low, low HP. But the damage has been done. It looks like the team might better win on this fight. Yeah, it seems to be there's a lot. Actually, you lost one, the point. Yeah, there's a lot of one v one fights going on. It seems to be there, there. There seems to be quite a lot of this kind of. I'm going to kill you and hope my teammates also kill their respective people. Uh, not much in the way of focus fire coming down. There's a couple of times where, as you just saw Swingley there, where he kills one person and just goes on to the next and the next. <laughs> We're seeing back to back kills coming out from Swingley there, mopping stuff up with the Nova. Uh, something that actually is, is a really important part of Echo that I think a lot of people do forget about is that. Doing damage is one thing, but actually converting those into kills is a completely different thing. Damage with a, with the amount of healing options, as we're seeing right now, with Spastic Crabs going from almost dead to almost full again. Joke going all the way back up, enough that he can now soak up some more damage. But the ability to heal it up is is very prevalent in this game to the point where you physically need to get those kills to convert that damage into actually something meaningful. Exactly, and well, right now this is the last little chance here for Casual Echoes. They're actually going to turn the point in their favor. The problem is this is like basically the last fight for both teams here because of the respawns and of how close they are to finishing off their percents. Jock's going to fall from this. Actually, no, he's still alive. He's on like one HP. Dragoboss looking to finish off a player. Jonas will be able to come up huge, getting quite a few eliminations there. And they turn the point back in their favor. And more importantly, they get themselves through now to the playoffs to join Gravity, Blurst, and Floaters Unite.